So I just read all seven of the Chronicles of Narnia. Cool. On a related note. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was pretty stimulating. I don't know. I recommend it. Um, Are you on um, Goodreads.com by any chance? I don't have an account. I consulted sometimes if I need like a book recommendation for yeah. my next read. Mm-hmm. Um, but why do you ask? Are you on Goodreads? I I recently joined. Uh, well, I joined like a year ago, and then I forgot about my account. But the funny thing is, I joined a year ago because I was in a in that comedy improv class. Yeah. And yeah, I I guess I give sort of a intimidating uh feel to certain people so in my, <laughs> sure so, so in my class uh the teacher said that we should trick the first thing about being more comfortable with each other to do improv and to be ourselves is to learn a little bit about each other <laughs> so she wants everybody to bring in a book that we trade with each other yeah and nobody wanted to trade with me <laughs> so i traded with the teacher I think I brought Clockwork Orange. Okay. And she gave me this book. <coughs> I hated it so much that I joined Goodreads just to review it and shit talk it. And th- and that's But th- did it get like awesome reviews on Goodreads? Was it like it, it five was, stars? It was honestly balanced. I, I really? think I, I think right now it's at maybe like three point five four. But a lot of the good reviews are well, I, I'd have to tell you about the book, but I'll I'll try and keep it short. The thing is, there, there's, it's it's a book based in like seventeen eighteen hundreds. Okay, was it called, Johnny Tremaine? No, no. I, I and and it was it was kind of confusing. So I don't even know if I got the story right. But what it is is there's a huge, uh, really renowned like hipster poet named w- Rilke or something, and this. The, the 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 summary of it is it's the fir- it's the first fucking emo kid in history <laughs> because so so they I, I don't know if they I don't remember if they both live in Germany I, I think they both live in Germany there's a huge fucking um renowned poet but he's huge he's hugely known in the Gesundheit he's hugely known in the underground of poetry because that's that shit kind of like and Gesundheit. Thank you. <laughs> you need me to move the ashes away from me? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Hang on. I think I've got one more. One more? Uh, 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 Hang on. It's uh, coming. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Cool. So so, that, so there's this huge poet, and there's this this just mazely little bitch guy obsessed with this poet. And he's... The, it's it's got great like poetry in it. The it's very descriptive. It's very sort of it takes you in that exact place in that exact seat, describes your entire environment around you. Yeah. But the thing is, this guy keeps t- he's like, oh well, nobody likes me. Uh, everybody's sneezing around me. <laughs> no, sure, it's no. the worst. And and, and no and and. I don't know what to do with my. I could join the military and travel and experience the world, maybe taste some different wines. But I, I'd rather, I'd rather meet you and write poetry. And I don't know, Aww. I don't know where to go. And I, I've, I've got this job at a coffee shop, and there's different people going in there who are more successful than me. <sighs> but I don't want to talk to them. Everybody hates me. I, you're the only one I admire. And so this whole book is, this poet collected all these fucking letters from this like emo kid and then i think at the, by, by the end of the book i'll i think none of the letters actually got to the fucking poet and the, and the kid ends up killing himself or i don't know Aww. but 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 the, so but, it was a good book yeah you the, really the, enjoyed the, it the, the point was that here's this guy he joined he ends up joining the military he ends up traveling he ends up working at all these different you know especially in that time you know you gotta remember it puts you in the book you're in fucking 1800s i don't know france you don't know the outside world there's no internet you don't you don't know anything about other countries other cultures so you got an opportunity here to visit all these different places have all check out all these different cultures eat different foods live a different life and this guy just thinks everything is gloomy and shit and phony 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 everyone's a phony so i had to i had to give it a good i had to give uh 
really bad review about that. I and don't and the re- the reason why I asked is because I I feel bad because I think I joined Goodreads just to shit talk books. Sure. Um. So I'm not on Goodreads, but I am a member of a book club. Yeah. And one of the books we read was absolutely awful. It was terrible. It was this book called La Rose, and it was about uh, an Indian reservation, and there's like a Native American couple that live on the reservation, but they're on, they're right on the border, and their neighbors are a bunch of white folk. And the Native American man is out hunting, and he is shooting at a deer, but LOL misses and kills his neighbor's son. So he kills the white guy's son. And so as like an act of atonement or an act of penance, he uh, trades his own son to the white family for the, the white kid, LaRose is his Was name. there an auction? To, there was not, no. Um, but I think, based on what you've told me about Get Out, like you can definitely... <laughs> see the LaRose influence. Yeah. So they they trade away his son to like replace the son that he shot and killed. And like it's just a story about the family coping with like the son being gone and like yeah. he has a bunch of sisters and they're all sad. They're like, I'm so sad our son is gone or our brother is gone. Yeah. Let's go Christmas shopping. And so it goes like really into detail about them Christmas shopping and like they go to Subway and split a turkey sandwich and all this really obnoxious There's shit. There's a Subway back then? Well, it's like a, a yeah. modern <laughs> story, yeah. And they had a Subway in town and they bought perfume, but they couldn't get one perfume because it smelled like La Rose. <laughs> and it was like... It, the it was, Subway smells like La Rose with a bullet through them. Yeah. <laughs> no. So La Rose was the son that they traded. Dusty was the kid uh, that was uh. killed. So it was just like this terrible terrible story about these two grieving families and at the end uh the native american man takes the white man out to a field and he's i guess he's gonna shoot him Mm -hmm. just because like why not yeah or no the white man takes the native american out to the field because he wants revenge for his dead son and he goes to pull the trigger and as it turns out the son who was traded like went into the gun safe and like emptied out all the bullets. Yeah. Because you don't need that shit, I guess. And like the end, that's the book. <laughs> and we thought it was just like awful. We hated it. Yeah. And we go on Goodreads and it just gets like awesome, awesome reviews. Yeah. Everyone loves this fucking that's, book. Dude, so. I hate I hate that. I don't get that shit, man. Well, I think it's just like my book club is me and three other 20-something dudes. Mm-hmm. And I think it was very much like a read for like housewives yeah, to be like, oh my God, the emotions or something. And yeah. I'm an emotional guy. I can like sympathize. I well, can empathize. I can feel things. But it's just like, no, like it's not an emotional there's not, book. There's not a lot of depth to it. No. It's depth for the average person, for the average Joe. Yeah. But then like, a, a big, like, part of the story was the the Native American daughters were in high school, and they were, oh, it's not uh, auditioning, like, trying out for, like, the volleyball team. Yeah. So, like, there's a huge section about them practicing for the volleyball team. And it's like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care. And the ball smells like LaRose. Ooh. <laughs> And, like, they get the white neighbor girl to try out for the volleyball team, and I guess it's a tale of, like, camaraderie and, yeah, like, overcoming the odds. But, like, at the end of the day, it's just, like, very fucking and, stupid. And, and see, not not to rant again, not to interrupt you again. But, but see, that's, but like... I'm going to interrupt you. I, I could see that fucking book being, like, the number one book in today's social and whole oh, racial sure. climate, you know? Well, not even, like race but it's maybe race maybe maybe people just love that like ooh, the white man and the the native american are finally coming to terms yeah. with all the grief maybe the son being killed is a metaphor dances with crackers for, yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly right so, uh, so. Uh, 
So it's, it's yeah. It's, so it's, I don't trust Goodreads. And you, and you know, I I, I want to say this before I forget. I think a lot of people who review that kind of shit, it's not just about average Joes who don't have depth. Well, I guess it is, but but what I've noticed with people that I work with, we get sl- dude. I no joke. My job, you have to work your fucking ass off from six a.m. to eleven a.m. and then the rest of the day. You're pretty much just like kind of like emergency contact for the truckers. Sure. So we don't do shit. So we sort of um, will uh, message each other. Hey, check out this song. What do you think of this? Hey, check out this article. Isn't this funny? We just recommend shit to each other. Yeah. And what I've noticed is a lot of people who don't really. Everybody thinks they're an artist these days, but sometimes you have to accept that you're made to be a fan. And I think there's a lot of fans out there who think they're artists. (laughs) And, And what happens is that a lot of these people, same thing with Netflix, all this shit that's five stars is fucking horrible. And then I watch something that's one star and I love it. And it's I, I think it's because a lot of people, uh, like, like one of my friends, I go, hey, check out this. I check out, it was actually, yeah, check out Ghost Main. What do you think of this? And I purposely sent him just the audio link. And he didn't respond for like 10 minutes. He's like, oh man, this is just some fucking bored ass white kid in florida trying to be tough rapping about black metal and satan he, he he's not a thug he's not from the hood i'm like yeah but the, but it's good yeah he that's like that's the new thing is aren't you sick of bitches gold and you know fucking whatever it's 2018 everyone doesn't have nobody has bitches in gold everyone's in fucking power no you get you get my point though it's something sure. fucking new it, all that all that bitches gold rap is old 90s shit. I'm so fucking... I, I had to stop listening to Gucci Mane because that's what every single fucking thing is, you know? And this, like, for example, this kid, he had to read his whole description of this rapper before he could judge it. And I'm like, and he's like, oh, yeah, this 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 is nothing to do with the hood. I'm like, how do you know? You know that from right. one song? And because I knew he read, read a review, and For that's sure. why I think a lot of things like you were saying, LaRose, or how does this shit get five stars? It's because people hear, well, this is sure. the biased review. Well, this is how you're supposed to feel about this, and that's exactly how I felt about Tuesdays with Maury. <laughs> that was that, so fucking dumb. Yeah, I do you, do you remember that, that shit, John? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember it. You remember? You remember Bill? Yeah, yeah. dude, hated that book. That whole book. Well, things used to be like this, if you ask me, back in the day. You do want to know? I guess you can tell me. I don't. Well, and then you could you could hear him putting his fucking elbow on his you know old man knee. Yeah. Let me tell you this, son. This is how it, you know that whole fucking book is just an old bastard ranting. You know, right? If I want that, I'll just record myself twenty years from now. But yeah. the old bastard dies now. The young man is making millions, yeah, off of it. Exactly, which is the thing I always thought was like kind of fucked up. Like, it wasn't like the author had nothing to do with it. Yeah, he was like talking to someone, publishing this other guy's thoughts and his stories. It's like, the, it's like what I was saying about the letters with the poet. Yeah, you know exactly right. Um, so, and then and then didn't that author make like four more books about the same situation or something? Isn't there like probably, days of some? I don't know. What was God? Who wrote? Which album? Yep, Bingo. Good memory recall. Did you look that up? You just I, know? I have I have selective memory. Oh no. sure. No, I do, I do. I just remember random shit. Same thing. Um, did you ever read the things they carried? I believe so. It was a Vietnam book. Did you ever read that? No, no. no. Oh shit! I wanted to read that, but I didn't. No, I know. I know what you're talking about. So it's a story about this guy who goes to Vietnam and he's telling all these stories, and then maybe like three quarters of the way through the book, he like reveals that he never actually went to Vietnam. But like, you're like reading the story like it's all true. Yeah. And then he lets it slip. Like that's not how it happened, but that's how it could have happened. <laughs> And it's like, well, this is fucking worthless. Yeah. <laughs> and the argument is like, does it matter, man? Does it matter if it's true? Because it made yeah. you feel. It made you think, man. He's he's and Dennis Hopper in the Easy Rider. Right? Uh, exactly. Maybe. No. <laughs> I, I know the Easy Rider soundtrack. I've never seen the movie. Oh. But Jack Nicholson gets killed. So. 
He's just he's like a paranoid hippie. I think. Yeah, that that is on acid all the time. So it's, I don't. Know. But again, like both of these critically acclaimed books, that I just didn't really care for. Yeah. Does that make me a bad person? I don't think so. You got two cigarettes. May I have one? Uh um, If not, that's cool. Uh, it's cool, man. Yes, it's cool. you can oh. have one. And I'm gonna save the last one for. Did something you want, else? Yeah. Did you want the last one and then uh, and then the other one for something else? I don't care. Uh, that was gonna be my plan. I was okay. gonna smoke another. Yeah, is yeah. that okay? Yeah, that's completely. Will cool. you smoke another cigar? You've got like fourteen well, of them. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you want to be hear this. Ah, uh, no, it, it's all good, man. I'm I'm chill. The, but uh, it, the, it reminds me of um how we mentioned like all these classical novels and shit. I also wa- rewatched, but I remember having to read The Outsiders. Sure. Which is, it's a good classical novel, but you know what, dude? I completely forgot because, all right, here's what I remember. I watch, they made us watch that movie in school. Sure. After everybody read the book for a project. What was that S.E. Hinton? Yeah. A- and I, I was like, w- w- I remember watching it and I, and I remember thinking like, why, this is about greasers, about the fifties, about fucking you know the whole rockabilly scene and the socias and why why didn't I like this? You know when you're a kid you're like I'm gonna like everything about greasers. I yeah. want to be that rock and roll guy. You sure, know? John Travolta. Yeah. Well, he's he's not in there, but it's like, no, but you know, yeah, Greece. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so hey. <laughs> yeah, it's, so so I'm watching this and I'm like, why? I, well, no, I'm remembering it before I watch it again. Why didn't I like it? So I rewatch it, and I know why, dude. It's f- fine, but not it, enough violence. No, no well, I, yeah, it could have been not cool enough more, people but, cutting dude, themselves up and eating themselves. <laughs> dude, it felt like it had a really like in the closet undertone because every I'm I kid you not, you can make a drinking game out of this. Every ten minutes, there's a fucking grown man crying and cuddling with another man. The only character that doesn't cry and and like and like lean on so, on another guy, Pony is, Boy. Is, no, no, fucking uh, Tom Cruise. Everybody else, two bit. W- w- what's his name? Uh, D- Derry is Patrick Swayze, the bro- the big brother. Then there's Rob Lowe, which is the middle brother. He cries as well. They all cry. Pony Boy fucking cries. What about everything? Oh, I ordered a hot dog, not fries. <laughs> 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 you know, and fucking, and then uh, uh, what, what's his name? Um, uh, Matt Dillon, he, the guy who gets out of jail. You know what I'm talking about, or no? No, I've never read the book, and I've never seen the movie. Okay, so yeah, no, but every yeah, Matt Dillon is uh, yeah, he's he's the guy who gets out of jail, and he's trying to get back. He's trying to get back to like regular life, but he gets back in the greaser life and ends up dying at the end. But sure, point is. Every fucking guy in that gang is just leaning on someone and crying. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know, I could, see, I, I remember now, holy fuck, I'm in seventh grade. I'm like, why are these, they're are crying. They, a are lot. they supposed to be pussies like are this? Are they gangsters? Yeah. It, it, it was, it was a emo Maury episode of The Warriors, you know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, what the fuck is going on? I mean, John, do you remember that? No, I have. I mean, I've seen the movie. I've read the book, but it was so long ago. I just, I don't really. Yeah, I, remember everybody crying. <laughs> it makes yeah. me want to cry. It, and it, and it's some of the scenes are so awkward because it's like yeah. So there's the the big brother is Patrick Swayze, middle brother is Rob Lowe, and then Pony Boy is the the younger brother. And it's like spread apart. First Pony Boy's crying like, I can't. We just killed somebody. I don't. We gotta run away. My brother's gonna give me a beating. My brother, the dairy. You know, Pat's. He's gonna give me a beating. And then, the movie moves on like a half hour. And Rob Lowe, I hate it. I hate it when Big Brother Dairy beats you up. I, I just. <laughs> I gotta be in between all of it. And then all the way to the end of the movie, Patrick Swayze, you know, oh, I just hate beating you up. <laughs> it's just like, dude, what the fuck, man? I thought we were sensitive in 2018, you know? Th- th- is this how much people fucking cried back then? Greasers, the people who were supposed to be badasses, you know? The tough guys. What the, what the fuck are the socias? The socias are like the higher class, the, the like mods in there. What the fuck are they? Are they just listening to Sky and getting high? Because now I want to be fucking high yeah, class, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> C- cry- crying from laughter instead of you know oh right. man 
I don't want that book to be written by like a fifteen year old or something. I I S E Hinton. I don't know if I don't know. Maybe maybe he was fifteen when he wrote it. All right, let's see if Google knows. How old was S E Hinton? How old was S E Hinton when he wrote The Outsiders? Seventeen years old. According uh? to Cliff's notes, The Outsiders was published in 1967 when Hinton was only 17 years old and attending Will Rogers High School. Yeah. There we go. 17. Sounds like a 17-year-old crybaby. <laughs> Fucking cocksucker. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> good Good for S.E. Hinton. Yeah. What, what does the S and the E stand for? Does anyone know? No mm. idea. Nope. All right, I don't feel like asking my phone. It doesn't right. matter. Uh, C.S. Lewis, the gentleman who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, it yeah. stands for Clive Staples. Mm. Lewis. So, what does R.L. Stein stand for? Ooh, I don't remember. That's a good question. I don't remember. I should know. And you guys want to know why? You guys want to know why? Do tell. I got a really great story because. So everybody was obsessed with R.L. Stein. For those of you who don't know, yeah, dude, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Did, did yep. he do Fear Street as well? I think so. Yeah. 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 He did. Fear Street was sort of like more teen, but it was the teen version of Goosebumps. But anyways, he got so fucking big, Goosebumps and everything. And then Gavin really loves Goosebumps now. And I gave him, I had an awesome because <laughs> we had to, the Goosebumps got every fucking kid in our generation in a reading, pretty much. Yeah. And then not only, you know, the whole 600-minute go to Great America. Anyways, started reading a shitload of Goosebumps. Started buying them through mail because you get a cool glow-in-the-dark Goosebumps wallet. that I get. <laughs> so then Kelly goes, hey, R.L. Stein is coming to Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago for a signing. And we go. Now as an adult... I don't really give a fuck about him. I mean, why? <laughs> sure. You know, why? Yeah. I I didn't even know he was alive still. Yeah. And we're in line, and I'm I, I'm I'm, t- I'm thinking to myself, fuck, Gavin's got his book to sign, and I gave him my glow in the dark wallet. What the fuck, man? What am I gonna? So, yeah. Look at this, man. I go up to him. I go here. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I used to like you as a kid. Well, what, what? That's a perfectly good phone. I don't want to sign that. I'm like, no, dude. I'm a huge fan. He signed my fucking phone. Nice. <laughs> so your this phone is, is a, Stein. It's Stein by R. L. Sign. Yep. It's it's the haunted phone. Did he sound as Jewish as he made? He, him sound? Yeah, dude. Seriously, he's Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David combined, like really? mixed together. And yeah, and he and he looks like uh, what's his George Costanza sort of. That. So. Fair enough. Good for him, but, though. Great but yeah, author. Yeah, yeah, it was cool to meet him. Something, you know, from childhood. But, um, yeah. <laughs>